Hey folks, welcome to ADSR. I'm Stephen Ellistead. Make sure you subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel and follow on social media. In my last drum synth and machine tutorial, we had looked at the kick, snare, and hi-hat engines, some of the parameters that shape the tones. We also learned how to do some layering of some parts, and we ended up with this beat. Nothing too fancy there, but it gives you an idea of the sounds. So I also wanted to, in this video, look at some other aspects, some more interesting parts that are tied to the tom and the cymbal. Let's get started with the tom. I've already inserted a tom drum synth pattern. We can get to that just by going here and selecting tom. And we can see that we have four different engines. The Tronic engine is kind of suitable to sounds like house kind of toms. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into keyboard mode here and I'll just insert a couple and so just like the other parameters we can get in here and adjust our bass tuning our decay a bend and impact. Bend is kind of the sound of how that note is shaped. I'd almost think of it as like the decay sound in an ADSR envelope. Combined with the impact, we can really shape the tones. And so some neat things there. And we have our, our fractal engine, which adds some uh, color and glide functions. And then we have some more that are trying to synthesize real world drums. So we have a floor tom, um, with our with our head tension uh, and the head flex. And we've got some muting type controls to control the skin of the drum head and kind of the air around it. And then we have a high tom, which can go from say a, a high roto tom kind of sound to, you know, fairly decent sized rack mount toms. But I find some interesting things can be done, especially if we maybe say take a synth tom that's kind of meant to be a, a high tom and bring it down an octave, you get some interesting characteristics. And the same thing will happen if we go to the floor tom and bring that up. So just some interesting ways of shaping that sound. Or creating interesting unique synthetic style hits it can be pretty effective. I'm gonna go ahead and mute that out though because I want to talk about a couple other sections. First we have our cymbal and the cymbal engine is pretty neat. If you just want to build quick crashes or hits in your part this is a great way to do it rather than hunting around for a ton of samples. We have two basic types of engine here. We have our crash engine and our ride engine. So if I go ahead and hit that crash we can hear that's a fairly realistic digital crash. And of course I can tune it and really shape the uh, decay as well as the impact. So you really hear that virtual stick hitting the virtual cymbal. And then we have a stereo width control here. And as I, especially as I bring the decay up, maybe drop the tuning, you'll really hear it in both ears if you're wearing headphones. And of course we have some color shaping controls here. Our density it's kind of modeling the thickness of the brass or the cymbal material. And so there's several different color modes. We have a metallic mode, which very much emphasizes some of those harmonics that are prevalent in metallic type sounds. We can also go normal and soft, which is going to dampen some of the metallic style harmonics. I find this to be really useful for just adding a quick hit somewhere. At the beginnings of, of transition parts or coming into a new section, it's a real fast, easy way to get some instant variation and be able to tune it later rather than, again, spending a ton of time going into your sample library and coming up with something and then shaping it in the sampler. Also in the cymbal section, 
And I'll go ahead and get rid of that for right now. We have our ride engine. And the ride engine is pretty cool. So the first thing, if you ever played a ride cymbal or watched a drummer play with a ride cymbal, we have two basic types of striking. We have um, striking it on the edge to get a lot of that that cymbal-y shimmer. And also striking it up towards the bell to really get a more of a pinging sound. And so we can, we can build some nice parts up there in case we can... This can be a, a pretty cool way to add some, some nice ride parts. Obviously, there's not a lot of variation in there because I didn't play it in. But you can kind of hear, we can get that going and just do some basic shaping. Maybe bring the output down a little bit. Back to our plug-in. And again, I can tune it to shape it towards whatever kind of tonalities are already present in my track. And one of the things I like to do, again, is just get a basic part laid in and then manipulate the sound of the stage. I find that taking something that's in time with your hi-hat pattern, in fact, mixing it down really low, opening up the width and the decay gives you a nice gentle wash of sound that you can layer underneath and bring in or bring out in different sections to add interest or you know rhythmic intensity. So that's a pretty good look at the tom section of the drum synth as well as looking at the crash and ride functions in the cymbal setting. In my last video on drum synth I'll take a look at the percussion and show you how to do some interesting things with the shaker patterns. So if you have questions, please do leave them on the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow on social media. I'm Stephen Ellistead. Thanks a lot and have a great day.